The virtue of hospitality requires an attitude of generosity and mercy that is so powerful it can draw souls to Christ. Today's guest is Soren Johnson, whose family mission is evangelization through hospitality. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik, your host, and today I'm blessed to have Soren Johnson on the show to talk about how he and his wife ever do evangelization through hospitality. So here's their story in brief, and we're going to talk about this in a lot more depth. Founders and directors Soren and Ever Johnson met in the Jubilee year of 2000 at a seminar designed to teach Pope St. John Paul II's vision for a culture of life, to inspire families to make home a taste of heaven for the renewal of faith and culture. The Johnsons founded the nonprofit in 2006 and hosted seminars and fostered community in Washington, D.C. area parishes from 2006 to 2014. In 2014, the ministry opened Trinity House Cafe and Market in Leesburg, Virginia, to engage the community with a public representation of the domestic church. Intriguing, right? In 2019, the Johnsons, proud parents of five children, began teaching the Heaven in Your Home workshop, how to build a flourishing Catholic household in parishes and sending out an inspiring weekly e-newsletter for parents. So in 2021, they started the first parish-based Trinity House community group to give families a place to grow in living out and passing on the faith. And beginning in the summer of 2023, this plug and play model of all family ministry is now available to any parish in English or Spanish through an annual subscription. And you can find Soren and Ever Johnson and their beautiful ministry at trinityhousecommunity.org. That's in the show notes. You can also check out their cafe page at trinityhousecafe.com. My goodness, what an amazing way of life, Soren. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lisa. Great to be here. Oh, man, this is such an honor. So if you wouldn't mind, just give, it, give us your personal uh, brief history of what got you and Ever and your family all moving in the, into this space of hospitality as a means of evangelization. Well, um, I, um, I, mar I married up. I married into a movement. Um, I married into Texas and into the Irish. Um, <laughs> my wife is from a family of 12, and she grew up in a beautiful um, daily witness of hospitality and of really taking the faith seriously in the home. So she was blessed to look back on a childhood where um, you're, you weren't exactly sure who was coming to visit for dinner that evening. And, um, and then, um, it was, all, she also grew up in a restaurant family. So she was behind the counter helping customers and, um, just developed a love for that. And meanwhile, I grew up next door to my grandmother, um, who was widowed at an earlier age and she took on a mission of hospitality and, um, she would host, uh, refugees, immigrants, um, visiting um, missionaries who were coming through our town. And so I, her home was a revolving door. And uh, so she would, uh, she even had an apartment in her home where, you know, she was always hosting people and she called it the prophet's chamber because she was, she was like the widow of Zarephath in the Old Testament, you know, who just, okay, who's it? Who are we hosting now? You know. Wow. So I guess I, I grew up that. with such a beautiful example there. My goodness. That is astonishing. Just the way the Lord had the two of you cross paths and you both yes. had this very similar thread running through your lives. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Really so so take us into a little bit of the two of you meet at this event, which we mentioned in your bio. Yeah. Um 
and you were both inspired. And at some point, obviously, you got married and started having your five children. Um, yeah. What did it look like as that family vision started to evolve? Yes. Well, you know, we both uh, obviously wanted to raise our children in the fullness and the joy of the faith. We had both been blessed with experiences where we got to see what we call an immersive Catholic environment and the or immersive Catholic experience. Um, you know, if you've ever been to Poland or in other countries where, you know, the air is just thick with um, the beauty of the faith as it permeates so many different aspects of culture. So we had that vision and dream. Uh, but I have to say, when we had our first child, it was kind of like so many parents, just backs against the wall, uh, not sleeping much. And, you know, I think the church is really there for us in in like free Cana as we get ready for the sacrament of marriage. Um, but we sensed a little bit of an absence of like, OK, well, what now? What's the vision <laughs> for daily strategies in the home now as young uh, parents? Um, so that that kind of um, desire to, you know unpack the church's teaching and make it very accessible, I think, started in those early years. Yeah. So give us just a couple of brief snapshots of what did you try first? What did it look like with there you are building your family, you're working, you're doing all the things and you're learning at a steep rate, right? As we all do when we first start our families. What sure. were the first things that you tried as far as entertaining others? <laughs> Yeah, I think it was um, it was really just opening our doors again, marrying into a big family. The doors are open to, uh, you know, my sisters in law, brothers in law, the cousins. Um, that's that was there from the beginning of our marriage. I think we wanted to emulate what we grew up with. And that, that is, you know, the home is not just a private, it is a private place. Uh, it's a sacred place, but it's also um, a place where the doors can be open and people can glimpse God's love and God's graces can flow through the home. So um, I think that just took the, it looked and felt like simply hosting, even in the midst of the chaos and the, you know, the, the diapers and, you know, uh, who slept, who really slept last night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is, too, that when you have that attitude of the door is open and people are welcome, that you probably don't sweat the small stuff, like there might be some dust on the furniture or maybe unfolded right. laundry on a chair or whatever that might be. Right. Yeah. Definitely. What, definitely. What kind, what kind of virtue or lesson does that innately teach when you allow people to come and go freely to, to a degree? Yeah, I, th I think um, it really points to um, God's abundance. I think we're in kind of a, it's very easy to slip into a zero-sum mentality mindset and just think, okay, well, I only have so many hours in the day and I just, I don't have what it takes to host or I don't have what it takes to um, host my own family <laughs> for a nice meal, you know, uh, becomes a very quick kind of, um, so I think this is where um, God's abundance can really, can, how his overflow of his grace. Um, my wife and I just keep going back and back to the um, image of the, to the Holy Trinity. And I'm sitting here at our cafe and behind me, you can see um, a copy of the famous icon by the uh, St. Andre Rublev. Um, and that icon is really, if you kind of dig into it, you find out it's called, it used to be called the hospitality of Abraham and Sarah, because <laughs> these are the three guests there in Genesis near the Oaks of Mamre. Um, the, the original icon or the earlier versions of the icon had Abraham and Sarah visible serving these three angels, huh. um, the three guests. Um, so I think for for my wife and me, um, keeping this icon in mind is a real example for us of how, you know, we 
when we welcome guests, we are welcoming Christ. And we can go all the way back to Abraham and Sarah, who hosted um, the three angels. And as you know, scripture is just permeated with um, this idea that we could be hosting angels unaware uh, at any day. Um, and so what a gift we have in our faith to just um, go deeper in our dependence on the Lord to allow him to serve through us. Because we're just finite beings who get tired and stressed out and how can I host? Well, the Lord is, is really working his graces through us. Yeah. So true. We, we can talk ourselves out of anything and we might miss out on a great adventure that God has for us and the opportunity to really learn to hold his hand on, depend on him more. It might be the thing that makes us saints, uh, which yes. is a little frightening, really, because, you know, if you've read the lives of the saints, these are people who are all in. You can't just kind of monkey around. Um, right. So you, you teach something called the five levels of the domestic church. Would you mind stepping us into that, Soren? Sure. Just uh, kind of a thumbnail sketch is we just really um, kept going back to this paragraph 2205 in the catechism, where it says that the Christian family is a communion of persons, sign and image of the communion of the Father and the Son in the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, that sounds like some pretty high theology. What does that mean? Well, I think every family reflects the communion of persons um, in a beautiful way. And so our five levels of your domestic church, or what we like to call it your Trinity house, um, just begins with faith life level one, where you receive God's communion. And uh, what a relief, right? We don't have to make it up. We just receive the faith, the gift of the Eucharist. And then in level two, person and relationships, we care for this communion. We deepen this communion by um, strengthening healthy relationships in our home, of course, beginning in the marriage. And then in household economy, level three, you care for your communion. And this is where we spend, you know, 90% of our time doing the dishes and doing the laundry, paying the bills, budgeting. But this is where we're serving one another on a daily basis in beautiful ways. And then in level four, family culture, this is where you get to celebrate the communion that your family is stewarding. Um, and this takes place fundamentally at the dinner table. And we can get into talking more about that, you know, the hosting. Um, but finally, as we've kind of already talked about a little bit, this is not meant to just be contained in our home. Our home then has level five, hospitality and service. And this is where we share the communion that we have received. And it's it's endless, it's abundant, and it's a beautiful way in which the family evangelizes right there in your own neighborhood. Mm, I love that so much when you talk about the idea of overflow, and I know that's something that you talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. We're filling up our own home and our own family first. And then that level five is part of that overflow. I want to take it even deeper and, and get more about how you ended up in that overflow after the sponsor break. Um, but we're just going to take a moment to hear from our wonderful sponsors at Homeschool Connections. And we will be right back with Soren Johnson talking about evangelizing through hospitality. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Walter Crawford. And I'm Maureen Whitman. We are the co-founders of homeschoolconnections.com, and proud sponsors of the Homeschooling Saints podcast. Which is here to help you homeschool more joyfully, more easily, and more effectively. We want to thank you for listening. And we invite you to check out our courses at homeschoolconnections.com. And now, back to our program. All right, we're back with Soren Johnson, and we are talking about evangelizing through hospitality. So, Soren, you went from cultivating hospitality in your own home and in your extended family to then taking a pretty amazing leap of faith and doing something in the public sphere. Would you mind just stepping mm -hmm. us into that? Sure. Well, we had been um, uh, convening and hosting these lovely groups of young adult Catholics and other Christians in the DC area. And this took place in parish halls, kind of, you know, sometimes 
in the lower level and you would pull the chairs out of the closet and set it up. And my wife would just transform any parish hall into this gorgeous, you know, candle lit, um, you know, catered, beautiful centerpieces. You know, it was a, an experience that of beauty that really uh, inspired a lot of people. So we did that for four or five years. And then we got this kind of prompting in prayer. Why don't, why are we doing this kind of hidden away in parish halls? Why don't we go to the public square? Wow. So we put the, we put the uh, kind of vision, uh, the idea in front of our prospective supporters. And they said, let's make this happen together. So we um, raised the seed capital to um, lease a beautiful home. Uh, it's built in 1795. Oh. It's in the heart of Old Town Leesburg, Virginia, which is one hour south uh, west of DC. And uh, we've been here for nine years uh, this October. We opened on the Feast of St. Therese in 2014. Wow. She's one of my favorites. My daughter is named for her October 1st. Uh, All right. That's exciting. Oh, my gosh. So you have a little bit of a Carmelite connection, too. That's yes, fun for me because I'm a third order Carmelite. Ah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you went through this business model of creating a presence in the community. Tell us a little bit about your vision for that, like how how what its objectives are. And maybe a little bit of how those play out for us, just so that we can kind of have a peek into your world. Sure. Well, we we it, when we kind of step back and look at the bigger context that we're all in, uh, fewer and fewer people are stepping across the threshold of a church. Our culture is increasingly secular and um, um, pulling back from the practice of faith. And we can look back on a beautiful 2,000-year tradition of Christian hospitality in the public square, where Christians before us have said, you know, it's not enough to just practice the faith in the privacy of our homes. Uh, we are called to um, love our neighbor as ourself and, and serve them. And so I think in that broader context, we are kind of taking almost like the vestibule of the church and moving it into the public square and giving people a chance to glimpse the beauty. And that's really, we, we wanted those who um, stepped into the cafe to kind of have a, an immersive experience of beauty and peace. And then, you know what, maybe the Lord will pull them towards his truth and goodness, but we'll begin with the beauty which is accessible and recognizable to all. And so we really, um, it's amazing. We found um, this, pro this property, this home, um, it's at the corner of Church and Market Streets. Oh my goodness, yes. that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. And we are three blocks from our own 13,000 member parish, St. John the Apostle. Wow. So. Uh, we have just an extraordinary opportunity here to um, host over 20,000 people per year who are coming through our doors. And the courthouse is right across the street from us. So we're every day we're hosting lots of people who are just in and out of the courthouse. And, you know, they may have no faith. They may be um, uh, Protestant. They may be Catholic. But, you know, they can come here and just enjoy wonderful coffee, great food. And this is where we kind of go back to the Trinity icon that's behind me as we talk about a welcome, listen, serve approach yeah. here at Trinity House Cafe. And um, briefly, the on the left side of that icon is the Heavenly Father. And we talk about how he welcomes us to his table, the altar, and we are welcomed by him. And then right across from him on the far right side of the icon is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in the icon is the most kind of translucent. Um, and the Holy Spirit uh, listens to our prayers, accompanies us, is our advocate. And so we have the welcoming and the listening modeled by us, modeled by 
these two persons of the Trinity. And then finally, in the center of the icon is the sun. Jesus is, is sitting beneath the tree of life in the icon. His clothes are the darkest uh, because he was incarnate. He is wearing purple uh, the, uh, and dark blue, the, the colors of a king. But he's serving us with his tree of life, but he's also inviting us to take up our cross in our journey to the Father's love. And so as we look at um, how we are made in the image of the Trinity, in, um, the image of God, uh, we, can, we can think, how am I welcoming? How am I listening? How am I serving today in my family and beyond my family? And we hope that is glimpsed at Trinity House Cafe. Wow. So I'm just curious, on a given day, you're serving food, you're you're listening to people. What are some of the opportunities to serve other than the obvious, right? You're taking good care of them as customers. You're making a beautiful and welcoming environment. What has some of that listening drawn forward that you've been able to respond to? Sure. Well, we have um, we've got a great team of staff here. And, you know, if you've got a line of customers, you've, your, your first mission is to just deliver that food and drink in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's not going to be for a long conversation. But um, as we have just tried to cultivate this welcome, listen, serve approach that reflects the Trinity, um, we've had individuals come through our doors, begin to just spend a lot of time here, look around. Oh, we have a gift shop. Oh, we've got used books, uh, beautiful, you know, uh, Catholic literature and theology. Oh, there's a crucifix. Oh, there's some icons. And they, they're they able to, um, we've had at least two individuals say that their time at Trinity House brought them back to the church wow. after a season after a season in their life of being away from the church. Um, wow. So, so those, those are very special um, examples. Another one that I just love is that we have uh, three beautiful couples um, who met right here at the cafe and then went on to get married. So oh, that's wonderful. Three, three Trinity house marriages. So <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so I think those are examples too. We just want people to know, okay, the cafe is a bit of a public representation of what you could be doing in your own home. You know, mm. it, your, your home is not a cafe, you know, obviously, but, um, when we open our doors and allow God's grace to flow through, you know, uh, incredible, incredible things happen. Wow. And I bet, and I just, just getting the holy shivers listening to you because there are probably other things that are kind of undefinable, things that you notice, ways that people are when they settle into this environment that, that is yeah. so full of love and beauty. And there are probably also, I have no doubt, actually, countless things that you will find that will be played before your eyes when you enter heaven someday by God's grace, uh, that yeah. you will get to see those fruits that God will show them to you as yes. you persevere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, no, so thrilling. And, and really quite a bold thing to do too, to have undeniably Catholic artwork and books and things like that around. And just to be, just to be present, I feel like, you know, on a, just a purely psychological level, when you have that acceptance of who you are and what you value most, what, you're, what you wanna stand on, as, yeah. as the, in the life that you lead, you give other people permission, whether they know it consciously or not. You give sure. them permission to be in a kind of an authentic and accepted place of being. It just seems like such a healthy place to be. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, one of our friends said, Trinity House Cafe is playing the long game. You know, this is, you're, when you open your doors six days a week and you know, uh, go through paying meals, taxes and health and ins health inspections and doing inventory. And, you know, 
just all of the nitty gritty of personnel and hiring and training, you know, it's, it's hard work, but what you're, what you're doing is you're providing this embodied experience of the faith for thousands of people. And, you know, that makes it all worth it because you don't know what kind of seeds you're planting, what what kind of experience people are having. I mean, we hear so many stories and, you know, they leave prayer requests. Oh, and they that's talk, wonderful. They talk about, we've had people say, I always come to Trinity House to have my most significant conversations. Wow. Um, and oh. we've had our evangelical Protestant brothers and sisters say, we we feel at home at Trinity House. Um, we were praying for a place like this before you even opened, you know. So I think you get to also see a place of Christian unity of um, what Father Richard John Newhouse called the ecumenism of the trenches of, uh-huh. you know, of Christians coming together to host. We don't, of course, we're Catholic, but, you know, we're doing this in the love of Christ where we have the unity of him. Wow. So beautiful. That unity is just so much a part of what he desires for us. Yes. Um, Yeah. So would you mind just describing some of the resources that people can find at your website? And again, that's trinityhousecommunity.org, everybody. They've got a great newsletter. They've got other things going on there. If you wouldn't mind just describing, what will we find there? Sure. Well, in addition to the cafe ministry, we're really equipping parents to um, get the confidence they need and the tools they need to lead spiritually in the home. And so on our website, we have a free 60-minute video workshop where my wife and I really, we begin with the Holy Trinity icon. She does a beautiful interpretation of it and kind of walks us through it. And then we get into the five levels of the Trinity House. So anybody can um, receive, you know, a free weekly dose of encouragement and practical tools with our Heaven in Your Home e-letter so they can sign up on our website. And then they, by signing up, you get free access to the workshop. And um, just this summer, we really broke new ground by saying any parish now can host their own Trinity House community group with kind of a plug and play model that is comprised of kind of five all family gatherings throughout the year. So that subscription is available on the website. That's so great that you've made that into something that people can take. And I'm assuming because they don't have to reinvent the wheel, that it just makes it simpler for them to then adapt to their unique circumstances. But they don't have to start from the ground up and they've got all these this guidance, which is such a blessing. Exactly. Exactly. We really, we know that there are super, super busy families out there, but who still are greatly desiring community with other Catholic parents and want to grow and and journey with them. Um, But it's a, it's a lot of work coming up with, well, what are we going to do for this hour? Or what are the discussion questions or what are the checklists? So that's really what the parish subscription makes possible is, you know, here's five 12 minute videos. Here's your discussion questions. Here's the format for the evening. And just, it's all, you just download it and, and run. And I think that's going to hopefully equip more and more couples who have a heart for bringing their communities together, especially kind of in the wake of the pandemic where we can really feel the frame and the atrophy of a lot of community in our parish parishes. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, there's a lot that's been broken, but as God always takes those, those kind of catastrophes and turns them into opportunities, we've seen an explosion because of the lockdowns and homeschooling and people finally seeing what was happening to their children in in schools and things like that. So there's been a great awakening um, that that I believe has strengthened us as much as our our world is suffering. Um, God is amazing. So, and out of this work that you've been doing in your own home. So just um, take us out, Soren, with anything else that we should know about the power of hospitality or other resources that are available. What's on your heart as, as we're wrapping up? 
Well, thanks, Lisa. This has been such a wonderful chance to go deeper in in hospitality. I think I would. I wish my wife were with me. Uh, she could speak much more eloquently to this. But I want to encourage all of your listeners to maybe do a little bit of a examination of of conscience when it comes to hosting and hospitality. Now, I I realize that sometimes we just feel so overwhelmed that the idea of putting on a nice dinner for someone is just beyond overwhelming. Um, But I think we're not really talking here about um, uh, a Michelin grade five star, you know, (laughs) dinner. I think we're, we're talking here about um, really small movements of the heart within the, within each day. And it all begins with knowing that right here behind me with the Trinity icon, you and I, we are hosted by the Lord in his wondrous community of persons. And what a privilege to be able to receive that gift from our Lord. And then to know that he's called us to a life, not of, of, uh, you know, filling ourselves with this or that, good in the world, but he's called us to a life of self-gift where we reflect his life of interpersonal communion, where we reflect his life at this table and um, give it to others. So I I think that would be kind of my um, uh, challenge. And I'm challenging myself because it's so easy to kind of turn back to the culture of kind of the big me and what I need and what I you know, my self-care, which is important, but the the Lord knows ourselves and he is, he's caring for myself. And so I can trust him to work through me. And what a privilege that is. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Wow. I mean, it's so homey. It's so everyday in a way. And then yet it has this whole supernatural walk with God that just elevates all of it and brings the mystery and beauty and the truth of of Mm -hmm. what it is we're here to live out. Uh, It's so good. Thank you so much for putting flesh on the bones of an amazing idea and living it out. And nine years now with the cafe and only God knows how many angels you've entertained underwear, as you said, and also the stories that will be told in heaven. Praise be Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, Soren, can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy life. And for those of you um, who aren't watching on YouTube, check out the YouTube uh, image just so that you can see this beautiful image of the Trinity behind Soren and this glorious cafe. Flock to Leesburg, Virginia. <laughs> Go see Trinity House Cafe. That's um, and and find them at TrinityHouseCommunity.org, but also Trinity House Cafe. Dot com. And again, this is Soren Johnson. Thank you so much, Soren. Uh, really appreciate you and all that you and your family are doing. Thank you so much, Lisa. Look forward to hosting you at the cafe someday. I got to get there. I am so on fire for this place already. I really mean it. <laughs> Road trip from Long Island coming up. Uh, there we go. W- w- we'll give you a heads up when we're on our way. Um, everybody, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Please pray for us. We're play- praying for you too. And uh, God bless you all as you discern where hospitality might hold a more central place in your family's mission. Take care now. God bless. Bye bye. <laughs> And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us.